it important to know about the species? We always think anything which is beneficial, we'll keep them. If it is not, let's eradicate. It's become human centric. Everything should be human you know, oriented. So if it is good for us, we will keep it. Otherwise, we don't need them. But snakes do play a very important role in the ecosystem as predators as well as prey. Both ways we do have advantage. Snakes feed on rodents, very important. You know how rats breed, right? There are more rats than human beings, right? So this is, snake is the only animal which can help us in controlling the population and also the disease, right? Rats do spread a lot of disease. Snakes can help us. So we have to save snakes if we have to be good, right? That's how we, we understand the situation. And the venom, venom is, a, is used for many uh, life-saving drugs. So people are still exploring it. They're, they're discovering new things. So this will be a breakthrough, particularly in India. People have just started working on it. So it's going to be really, really great. So we need these venomous snakes, even though they kill few people. We'll come to that point soon. So what, what, how do we protect these snakes? We need good forest cover. Let's talk about what the forest cover in India is. This is a report by WWF, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's published in Times of India. But what I would bring your attention there, 1987 to 2017, 30 years, the forest cover has gone up. Is this the good news? Yes, you think so? But let's see. The forest cover has gone up only in five states down south. How about northeast? Look at that. We are losing forest cover in northeast. So is it balanced or good or bad? It's balanced, but that's not going to work that way, right? And uh, so how are we losing? Everybody knows, but still we don't do much about it. Developmental activities, timber. We cut down forests for roads, urbanization, development, of course, industrialization, what not, you name it we cut down trees. In Bangalore, every now and then, we cut down about 800 trees or 1,000 trees just to lay a road, right? And uh, other than that, what are the threats snakes go through? Food industry, of course, our roads again. We kill lot, lots of snakes on road. And pet trade, that's one of the largest uh, uh, illegal trade happening. Pet trade, a lot of animals from Africa, South America, and uh, Southeast Asia, they get exported to Europe and other countries like America, where there's a lot of demand for our snakes. So that's also a major problem. I think major portion of the population, I mean, these exports, once they reach their destination, most of them don't survive. So that means they need fresh, one more batch of uh, uh, trade, right? Other than that, of course, skin industry is also a major threat to snakes. All said, done it's not all stories are really bad we do have a success story i would like to use king cobra my favorite animal as a flagship species or a it's like a tiger in the uh, reptile world so let's see what we learned about king cobras in few years i will talk about past present and future projects king cobra the one of the longest venomous snake in the world they can grow up to 18 feet recorded 18 feet in Thailand. In India, they grow up to 15 feet. The one which I caught a few years ago, he was this big, 15 feet, weighed 10 kilos. So they can grow up to that level. And this, ca this animal can kill an elephant in two hours or something. If theoretically, if you distribute the venom like the sweet in our after dinner or lunch, we can kill 20 people with that venom. That's the amount of venom it can produce. But one of the most intelligent snakes we have. I worked with these guys for almost 17 years. They think. They're just like tigers or lions. They look straight into your eyes. So that's one of my favorite animals. What is the distribution of king cobras? Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, of course the Himalayas, your Himalayan range, and all the way to Philippines, Southeast Asian countries. Not found in Africa, not found in America, not in South America, not in Australia. Right here from India all the way to Philippines. They come in different colors, different sizes, and they ha occupied different landscape. So what I understood when we started working with king cobras in Agumbe, along with my uh, ex-mentor and uh, 
uh, my uh, godfather, Mr. Bitaker, we don't know anything about these snakes. We knew whatever we knew from captive animals, but while zero information. So let's see what we learned. So what we wanted to know, how do people cope up with these king cobras in Western Ghats, central part particularly? Northeast, they just kill. Thailand, they kill. Vietnam, they kill. But in India, Western Ghats, where we work in Agumbe, people don't kill them. There are cases where I got a call that there is a king cobra in my house. Can you come and pick it up? I say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in Bangalore, so I'm going to take a night bus. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to reach it. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We will wait. So they go and sleep in their neighbor's house or their sister's house or brother's house. They do not touch the snake. That's the kind of patience level we have right there. So I take a night bus. Early morning, I go straight from the bus stand, go capture the snake. They do nothing. So that's a really, really conservation attitude you see there. So what we figured out, we understood their kinko, I mean the ecology and their behavior. I will talk one by one. Look at this. That's a dark bathroom. There's a life by soap also there. So that's a typical rainforest area for, uh, bathroom where we put fire from the outside and heat up the water. So that means we are creating a good uh, temperature there. So the snake is sleeping there. I couldn't see the snake when they, I went there. I used my flash to take a picture. If there is no flash, you can't see the king cobra. What else? We do find them in the car, sometimes in the living room, right? So what do we do? So out of 88.68% of human habitation, 45% were found inside the houses, like bedroom, kitchen, bathroom, toilets, roof, everywhere, right? So let's see how we rescue the king cobra. So this is a situation in right in the middle of the town. Look at the road. So if you find a snake, just grab him like that. It's easy. Just take 20 years to learn, yeah. <laughs> and they look at the people, very cooperative. At the same time, they are excited to see whether I die or the king cobra will die, you know. <laughs> they want to say, let's see how king cobra bites Gauri Shankar. Let's see, let's see, you know. And they want to videograph also. But that's an interesting thing. But people are cooperative. Yeah, sometimes they do come. But snake panics. So you have to control. So what I'm doing is just calming down for a few seconds while my, uh, my colleague Prashant, my manager, who is preparing the bagger, so we gently lift it and drop him while our audience are entertained. Yes. Good. That's how you handle a snake. Anybody interested to learn? Sikkim? No? Yes? Wow, good. Good. That's how it happens. So very important, we started building relationship with people there by providing a service. When there is a snake, they have two options. Either kill it or relocate it. So what we did, capture it, remove them. Uh, from their house and release them back into the wild few meters away from maybe 500 or 1000 meters That's what people loved it and more Encouragement, you know people call us they never kill even now So I have caught close to 350 king cobras so far one of the largest number of snakes rescued in the world Yeah And uh, apart from that the king cobras do build nests sometimes they build the nest right inside somebody's property So what we do protect the nest put my student there or I go there, 90 days we monitor, hatch the babies and take them gently along with the local people, we release them back in the wild. So like that we've managed to do about 500 babies like hatchlings gone back into the wild. So it's good. So that's, if you see the landscape, that's a pristine forest, disturbed forest. This is where my the study area was, a lot of human animal conflict, but luckily like I said, our people have more patience. So only 14% of the total population of the rescues I've interacted with people are inclined to kill. 86%, good. I would like to see this kind of number even in Northeast. Mizoram people go on a, you know, on a date with, in a car to kill the king cobra once they get to know that there's a king cobra in somebody's plantation. So these things have to ch be changed. And what we did, the third point, we put the tags, tags like this. Radio telemetry, we can't track them. As soon as we capture and release them, they just disappear. So there's no way we can uh, get them. We wanted to understand where they sleep, what they eat, 
whole day, you know, they're busy just like us or playing like orangutans or just lying down and sleeping. We have no information. In, the, in, a, in a captivity, in a controlled situation, they do nothing. They move from point A to point B, give food, they eat and sleep. But we wanted to know, understand them in the wild. So this was the best opportunity to do that using radio telemetry. So that's a transmitter which emits signal just like your SIM card from your mobile phone. What we do, we use tracking devices to collect this signal. Right, so what did we understand with this research? When you say capturing a snake and releasing it back in the wild, whether you're doing it right or wrong, we didn't know at that time. So if you relocate, let's say if you put it about 500 meters from your house, the snake will survive or no. If you take it about 100 kilometers from here and release it, whether you're going to survive, he's going to come back to his home, we don't know these things. It's really important for any conservation plan. So what we learned, if you see M1 was a translocated one. So we re took him from Gangtok and released him in Siliguri or somewhere, about 100, 125 kilometers. What happened? He moved about 83 kilometers. That means he was lost. So that's not a good strategy to do with, right? And what we figured out with M2 and M4, 45 and 30 kilometers. So these guys are trans, I mean, relocated. We took him from this auditorium, released him about 500 meters from here in a beautiful patch of forest. So this is very important. After we learned this, we started training forest department and a lot of rescuers. Now most of them all over India, they're following these uh, norms and rules, regulations, what we laid. So that's a very good research outcome we got due to the radio telemetry project which we did. Let's see. One more. Why, why a snake has to always be helpful to human being? They are interesting animals, isn't it? How many of them think they are boring? Nobody, after my talk. But before my talk, you decided already. Right? Let's see what interesting thing they can do. Have you ever seen this? Not on National Geographic or Discovery. Live? Anybody? Anybody live? No? How come? What is this called? I know I've written there in English. Male comeback. The two males will fight for female. So the winner gets to mate. She, he will go back. Let's focus. That's good. If you see, he's just pu pressing each other's heads. That's kind of wrestling. No biting allowed. It's illegal. Yeah? Disqualified. Because the point here is to mate. Fight and win the game and go mate. No, no point killing each other, right? If they both bite each other, both will die. Isn't it? Maybe a certain amount of immunity, but end of the day, someone will die. That's not the point. Here, the mating is the point. So let's see the next one. Once the mating is, I mean, the male combat's over, the male goes back. You see how he communicates. How do we communicate? Now we have everything, no? WhatsApp, messages, college days, we never had any communication. I had to take my bike and go around, do wheelie three times, five times in front of my girlfriend's house. That's when the attention comes back, right? But now, now it's easy. One text message, girlfriend is out. But they have their own ways to communicate. Watch it. So what is happening? That's the female, that's the male. He just finished his fight, come back, and he's claiming the female. And he's trying to communicate, he get, hey, look, I just had a fight, you know, you know let's mate. But, but it's very dangerous. They're cannibalistic. They eat own kind. They eat other snakes. And they don't mind eating their own kind. So female is small, male is big. There are chances of him feeding on her he, if he can't mate. So she's very careful. She's displaying submissive behavior. Look, I'm a mate. I'm not your food. So this guy says, I'm ready to mate. Come, let's do it. Of 3,500 species, king cobra is the only animal, only snake which can build a nest. Look at that. A legless animal collecting leaf litter, about 7 kilos of leaf litter. Morning to evening, she will work and build a nest and stay with the, with the nest close to 90 days. No food, no water. That's the kind of dedication a female has. That's something really, really interesting. No other snake would do that. There are five different clades. That means five different populations. 
one in Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, including your Sikkim and everything, and there's Andaman, Cambodia and Thailand, all Indonesia, Malaysia. Why is it important to d divide them into populations or species? You know about the tsunami, what happened in, uh, in uh, Andaman, right? Any time, at one shot, we might lose the population if you don't know which, what population we're losing. So this is really important to know what animal we are looking at. So next in future, including Sikkim, what we're planning to do is to look at the snake bite issue. We, if you see in India, we have data from Central and South India, but nothing from your Northeast. So Sikkim is one of our major uh, objective to work here. I've just applied for the permits to the forest department Monday morning, I mean afternoon we have uh, meeting, so we're going to discuss about the long-term plan. Even Arunachal, we got the permits, Mizoram, we're going to work all over India. What we plan to do is design a, a you know, pre-clinic, a complete uh, uh, anti-venom which can, which can, which has high, highly specific dose effective, region specific anti-venom. We don't have, if you get bitten by a cobra, the anti-venom what you're using right now comes from Tamil Nadu. The Tamil Nadu antivenom goes all the way to Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. You think it will work? Of course, that's the only thing, uh, option we have, but we are looking into much more detail. And uh, we will develop a detection kit right now. A snake bite is a very, very expensive thing. Close to 50,000 people die in India and close to 2 lakh people all over the world. And if somebody gets bitten, a farmer, he spends close to 1 lakh to 2 lakh anywhere between that just for his treatment. So expensive, very, very expensive treatment. Now what we want to do is we will identify, I mean, you, you get a, you, you take a swab and put it in a kit which will tell you what venom it is, how much dose, everything. So that's what we are looking at. Only America and Australia have these facilities, no other country. So we are planning to do something like this in IIC along with my colleague Karthik Sunagar. So we have a long plan, maybe a five-year plan. So. Next one, of course, to help in controlling the poaching illegal trade as well. So all this research will be quite beneficial, not b without training our forest department, educating our school kids, and of course, the local people. So that's what we try to do. I hope we will have king cobras for our future generation. Thank you.